Hello, welcome to this edition of Smart Growth Walker County. I'm Larry Brooks. Uh, today we're going to be joined uh, by Senator uh, Jeff Mullis. He is going to be talking to us about some exciting things that happen uh, during this year's legislative session. So we hope that you will uh, stay uh, tuned and uh, we hope that you will uh, gain some insight into what's going on within your state. And again, Walker County, we appreciate you watching us. Hello, I'm Larry Brooks. Uh, welcome to this edition of Smart Growth Walker County. I'm here with our Senator, uh, Jeff Mullis. We're uh, so excited about having him uh, with us uh, during this episode. So welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Larry. Glad to be here. Uh, we want to take a little bit of time uh, today to uh, talk about some of the uh, issues that uh, may be coming down from the state and uh, give uh, Senator Mullis a little bit of opportunity to uh, sort of explain some of the things sure. that are happening. So again, welcome. And, Thanks and, for having uh, so, me. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's just jump in. Um, so uh, just got through with the session, and I know that uh, every time that you uh, come home, there's always a, a, a gamut of, of things that you guys yeah. have been working on. Uh, give us some of the, the things that uh, you know, are coming well, out. Let me talk about the session first. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize, but we're a citizen legislature. Uh -huh. We're there for 40 legislative days, which is one of the shortest in the nation. So uh, we, we go to the legislature, then we come back home and work our daily jobs to find out some of the problems and hopefully improve it the next session. So our session starts the second Monday of the year by the uh, Georgia Constitution, and we're in 40 legislative days, which generally last to the end of March. Mm. And then we're home on the weekends, and occasionally we have a break here and there, but uh, our job, our constitutional obligation is to balance the state budget, and also while we're there to take on different issues to try to prove it for uh, our area and the state. Yeah. Well, I, I, tell me this uh, before we get into those issues. Uh, now, how many terms have you served so far? Well, I have served seven two-year terms. Okay, so 14 years yeah, you've been there. Yeah, right. Well, uh, tell us some of the uh, committees that you sit on as well, too. Well, I'm the chairman of the Rules Committee, and the Rules Committee decides which bills go to the floor of the Senate, so that's mm -hmm. a very important committee. Plus, I'm on economic development, appropriations, and I'm subcommittee chair appropriations for economic development. And I'm also on uh, regulated industries, which is uh, power, uh, supply, and other industries that, uh, that are regulated by the state. Sure. So uh, you are uh, in, a, in a wonderfully, uh, I guess, uh, advantageous place to uh, really affect a lot of uh, different things that uh, the citizens here wow. uh, uh, may uh, have a lot of uh, interest in. So, Well, I have, I've been very fortunate to be able to, uh, to be I don't want to say promoted, but to be seen as one who could take on better responsibilities. Yeah. And the leadership of the Senate has taken me to the rules chair place, and there are a lot of uh, influence in, in those committees that I'm on. So the, the next step up is lieutenant governor and then governor, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I have no desire for that. I enjoy representing the people of northwest Georgia sure, in sure. the state Senate. Well, talk to us about some of these issues that uh, you know we, we are hearing about. Uh, what's some of the things that came out of the session this time that you're proud of that? Uh, well, we, we took on uh, some of the social issues uh, that like liberty, uh, freedom of uh, the First Amendment right, which mm -hmm. is the freedom of uh, speech and freedom of religion also. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, popular uh, 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 pastor protection and also uh, religious freedom, religious liberty. And those are all very controversial in some regards. Yeah. People in my area are very in, uh, on board with those kind of sure. issues. Now, according to what we've seen, uh, the governor uh, plans on vetoing that. Um, uh, do you think that there's really any uh, chance of you guys being able to override his veto? Well, the votes weren't there. I mean, it barely passed in the House. And since it's a House bill, the House would have to initiate the uh, the uh, first off the special session mm -hmm. and then the veto override but there are not enough votes to bring us into special session mm -hmm. so my, my uh, preference is to work to find a, a better uh, balance next year and come in uh, to begin in session mm -hmm. with a new uh, 
compromise bill that would at least defend our First Amendment rights. So you do think that, well, do you think that eventually Georgia will have that uh, law on the books? Yeah, I do. There's so many states that already have it, and the federal I, government have it. Even yeah. President Obama voted for it as a U.S. Senator. Wow. So maybe we can just codify the federal law into state law, too. Uh, it seems like I had read somewhere that there were 21 states right now that yeah. uh, actually had it on the books. Yeah. Well, well uh, you know, just uh, talking about that, I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the, that the governor's decision to do that, you know, had a lot to do with the money being spent in Georgia, or at least that's what it seems <coughs> Well, to. as you know, uh, different uh, groups are threatening to not come to Georgia to do business, and and that, that's his perspective. He has yeah. a statewide perspective where mine is Northwest Georgia's sure, perspective. Sure, so, sure. you know, I respect that and I understand exactly, that. But, yeah. you know, we're trying to get the, uh, the Super Bowl and they said they wouldn't consider coming. And they're trying to get uh, other sporting events and things that would be huge economic impacts. Also, they claim that there were a couple of big businesses looking at being recruited to Georgia and they decided to look elsewhere. Now, those are the perspectives that he is considering, and I guess we all should, but I feel more that that issue is, is so important to the people of Georgia that that's why I supported it. Yeah. Well, and my district, too, up yeah. here. Well, it's, it seems like that, uh, of course, we've got uh, ample opportunity going into next year that's to pick right. that up. And, and yeah, I talked to Speaker Ralston recently, and he yeah. said, look, we got next year. Yeah. So we'll come back next year. Uh, well, you know, something else that uh, you, know, you and I were talking about b before uh, the segment uh, looks like Georgia is uh, number one again as far as uh, recruiting business uh, or doing business, you know, within a state. I mean, that is uh, wonderful news. Well, uh, again, Georgia is number one for business yeah. in America, and uh, it's it's all the partners we have, including uh, local industrial authorities that yeah. you uh, oversee in Walker yeah. County, and uh, the the uh, Northwest Georgia Joint Development Authority would be involved in that too. But sure. but. Uh, all the policies that we have created through the legislature and also the governor in um, making our tax structure beneficial for uh, businesses and to have a one tax uh, structure where years ago it was so convoluted in other states is higher. So uh, Georgia is more competitive now and we've become number one for like three years. I don't think in a row, but we've had three different years that we've been well, number one. Well, you know, we've had some great home runs, uh, yeah. you know, with Caterpillar and Kia and, and of course, locally for us, Audio, you know, yeah. coming into North Georgia. Plus so. you have many others looking. Yeah. And uh, that's been phenomenal for uh, Walker County and also Northwest Georgia. And you know, any jobs like, um, Audio here in Walker County is a regional impact. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. just like uh, the expansion in Chattooga County with Mohawk. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are many people from other counties up here. And, and Vanguard in Day County, and then Costco and uh, Cabela's in uh, Catoose County. So all of all those enhances our growth here in Walker, in uh, Northwest Georgia. Yeah, and Walker County citizens and, and experiences that as well. Sure. Uh, what's some of the other uh, issues that you guys have, have tackled this year? Well, you know, uh, being a pro-gun, a pro-Second Amendment legislature uh -huh. as I am, we, we have passed campus carries. Mm -hmm. And that's somewhat controversial, but, uh, you know, my whole preference in uh, legislature on gun issues is only the uh, gun laws are for the law-abiding citizens because mm -hmm. the bad guys already have the guns. That's right, yeah. So um, uh, the campus carries would be, you'd have to be 21 years old and have a carry permit which has an extensive background check. And we've just, we already have some kind of campus uh, ability, but we opened it up a little more. Did, have you, uh, did you guys get a lot of resistance, you know, as you were trying to put that Oh, together? certainly, from the, primarily from the, the uh, colleges themselves. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. People, uh, look, I had a thousand contacts from my area and all but two were for it. Yeah. So, you know, we're a big Second Amendment area up here. Sure. Now, more central and in uh, metropolitan areas, they weren't quite as, yeah. as for it, but we were. Well, I mean, it seems like that it makes good sense to have someone on campus that actually can defend the folks that are there. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, so, you know, it... it uh, uh, I know that some people seem to be very adamant uh, against it, but at the same time, I'll, I'd like to know. But my, I've got a child myself that's about to go to college, and uh, it would be gives me a little more, uh, I guess, uh, comfort in knowing that uh, there's the possibility that someone could defend uh, students if they had to. Sure, and currently she can have that vehicle in her. I mean, <laughs> that weapon in her vehicle. Sure. 
And uh, if she's walking to her vehicle late at night, you'd want her to have some kind of protection. Yeah. And I know being your child, she's experienced shooting sure. yeah. uh, that gun and has had some training. So, uh, again, uh, gun laws are for law-abiding citizens. Yeah. The bad guys already got the gun. Mm -hmm. So we can balance that out and give people the opportunity to protect themselves and their family and their property. We should do that. Anything else? Uh, well, you know, there are a lot of, we've voted for a, a tax reduction for our income tax from 6% to 5.4. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, it, it went out of the Senate. I don't know where it went well, in the House. Yeah, we're not through yet on that, on <laughs> yeah. seeing where everything falls. Yeah. And, and we had some other uh, issues that were uh, for our pocketbooks to help us. And, of course, we had pro-life legislation. I'm a pro-life candidate, so, you know, I want to make sure that we take care of unborn and so forth. Yeah, well, that's, that is so we had a pretty good yeah. session, not a lot of controversy. Some things that did not make it was the, uh, the expansion of the um, uh, cannabis oil. Mm -hmm. That's the marijuana derivative that helps some people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it came in late. The author, Alan Peak from Macon, uh, wanted too much at the beginning, and he didn't want to compromise to it was too late. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that issue will be coming back. I started to ask if you thought that would yeah, be on the it docket will be, for but yeah, this next it time. Will be, uh, the THC would be reduced and we'll add some more illnesses probably. Yeah. Well, I, do you ever see uh, Georgia becoming a, a growing state? Uh, well, you know, unfortunately, I believe this issue, the slippery slope, yeah. you'll have it legalized in years to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say yes. I, the reason I ask is I heard a conversation recently where that there were uh, some folks that were going backwards and forth on whether or not that they thought that that would become a reality here. So Well, that was part of uh, Representative Peake's bill to have some growers, but yeah. uh, the logistics of that just didn't work out well. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you monitor that? How do you make sure that's done properly? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, I would tell you that would be a big cash crop yeah, in big, Georgia. Big <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> I'm, I don't think we're ready for that, yeah. and uh, my vote wouldn't allow that. I would I would assume that they would, uh, I guess, do stoppings and things. Uh, you know, where that uh, you know, like with with tobacco farming, uh -huh. uh, you know, it would have to be heavily regulated. So I imagine so. Yeah. Uh, in the end, I'd imagine the product would be cheaper and it would be regulated. But at the same time, you know, you wonder... With lots of taxes on it. Well, how much of it would be state, how much of it would be federal, you know, that we're making the... Yeah, and you know, that, that needs to be a federal issue because yeah. if you do one state per... You're, you're going to have a, a quilt that just doesn't work. Sure. Just like immigration. Mm -hmm. You know, we want, I want everybody to be here legally. Yeah. However, the federal government needs to do that because we're a country. Mm -hmm. Each state is trying to do their own immigration, illegal immigration, and Georgia has. In fact, we took the lead several years ago. Mm -hmm. But because it's a now a patch quilt work throughout the country, it's just hard to know which state does what. It should be a federal issue, and they well, haven't taken care of even it. If the, even if the states are trying to do something with it, it seems like that the, the feds right now are reluctant yeah. uh, to really enforce anything. So That's right. I right. guess it's a... Catch-22, how much do you do and how much do you not do, and so... There are plenty of laws on the books currently, Yeah, just, but they're not being enforced, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Well, that... Uh, and, you know, we're all probably here from immigrants, oh, primarily. Oh, yes. Uh, don't get me wrong. Immigration is But, a but our family sure. came in legally at yeah. that time, yeah. so um, I just think people should be here legally, yeah. whatever the case. No, we have, uh, we have some, some great opportunities, I think, we that do. Uh, the immigrants uh, actually bring to us and, 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 you know, it really helps us grow and, and become a better uh, society. So. Well, that's, I agree with you yeah. completely. And, of course, Georgia now number eighth in the nation as uh, having a, the most population. We have wow. uh, over 10.1 million people. Yeah. So uh, it's a well-thought-out uh, state to relocate for families, businesses, yeah. and just to visit sometimes. So yeah. we're doing very well. Well, I, I know that... Um, uh, it, it was a heavily uh, fought over state during the primaries this year. So, you know, trying yeah. to pick up those uh, yeah. delegates. And, and of course, uh, uh, you know, with it having the population that it has, I know that that goes a long way to, you know, helping a candidate get where they want to be as far as an election is concerned. So. Oh, I'd agree, too. Yeah. So. And uh, let, me, let me bring you another issue that I think might be something of interest. You know, the, the movie and film industry in Georgia, we're now third in the nation with the most... Uh, Movies and films in it. Yeah. And I think Walking Dead is looking at coming to the Chattanooga area. That would mean northwest Georgia, too, because mm -hmm. they don't have the incentives in Tennessee that we do in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. I will yeah. see that you'll see more of the movie industry coming, reaching out from Atlanta.
yeah. and visiting rural communities it's like amazing. Northwest Georgia. Yeah, it's amazing. So are you ready for your close-up? Well, they've asked me. <laughs> they already put a call in, and, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, it really is because I remember years back when you were first talking about this, and, you know, people were uh, somewhat, uh, I guess, skeptical about whether or not yeah, that, sure. that they would choose to come to a, a, a rural state like Georgia. Uh, but we really are starting to see lots of, uh, lots of opportunities. Yeah, let me tell you way. the numbers, in fact. Up to about 2000, the total amount of money spent in Georgia from the movie industry, I'm talking about from 1973 or mm. whenever Deliverance was filmed, that started the movie industry in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, we probably gathered $1 billion. Now, we gather more than $6.5 billion a year from wow. the movie industry. Wow. So it is a major accomplishment for Georgia. And yeah. when a, a movie comes to a local community, there's a lot of money spent in that community. Sure. Yeah. So we're trying to get them up here, too. Well, we'd, we'd, we certainly would love to see more coming this yeah, way. Yeah, it'd be of course, great. Uh, the viewers probably remember Water for, for Elephants yeah. uh, being shot here not long ago. On so. West Cove Road, wasn't yeah, That's yeah. right, that's right. Uh, I, I had a cousin who was a sheriff's deputy at the time, and he said, I, I have never had to do crowd control the way that uh, we that had right? to do because of Robert Pattinson being oh, there. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, been from the movie well, well Senator, thank you so much for uh, being with us. Thanks we for appreciate having me, Larry. It. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, if you have questions, maybe you're out there and you've got some questions that you would love to uh, ask uh, Senator Mullis, uh, what's your phone number that you could well, share? Well, my phone you? number is 706-375 in the birth of our nation. 1776 and my email is Jeff Mullis at Comcast.net so give me a call or um, send me a message love to talk with you yeah so uh, until next time Walker County thank you so much for joining us all right there you have it we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this segment today with Senator Mullis again he shared some very insightful uh, details as to what's going on with this legislative session if you have further questions uh, you can reach him at the uh, contact information that's being shared on the screen right now and again Walker County until next time thank you for watching